tax deferred to tax free for long term care. Aren't we all tax rebellious to a certain extent and within reason? Enter the Pension Protection Act, the PPA, which may just be the best tax incentive afforded to people concerned about paying for long term care. It's legislation that was passed by Congress in 2006 and became effective January 1st, 2010. Why do we love the PPA and how it's tax advantage for all considering long-term care planning? It allows people to do a 1035 exchange or simply transfer an existing annuity or life insurance policy with taxable gains into a new policy that provides tax-free long-term care benefits. It encourages people to plan for future care and take advantage of the tax incentives inherent to long-term care insurance. Please stay with me as I help bring this to life with a full explanation. What type of insurance contracts can be used with a 1035 exchange? Number one, an annuity, fixed or indexed with long-term care benefits. These can provide long-term care protection, cash value, also known as accumulated value, or both. Any amount of the cash value not used for long-term care will be passed to your beneficiaries as a death benefit. These policies have two buckets of money. Number one, a base policy, which is the death benefit or cash value, and number two, an extension or continuation of long-term care benefits. If you need long-term care, the base policy's death benefit or cash value is used first to pay for care. After that base policy is fully used, the second bucket of money is used to pay for care for a specified duration up to a monthly maximum for long-term care. These policies typically provide a long-term care benefit pool two to three times the base policy amount, but lifetime unlimited benefits are also available. Therefore, leveraging a current annuity value and using tax laws to provide the tax-free long-term care benefits. Before the PPA, annuity owners had to spend taxable gains before the principal, referred to as cost basis. Cost basis is considered the after-tax purchase price in a non-qualified annuity contract. Non-qualified annuities that meet the PPA provisions allow you to withdraw money for long-term care coverage income tax-free. When filing a long-term care claim in this case, the cost basis will be distributed first prior to the gain within the contract. This will not be the case for non-qualified annuities that do not meet the PPA provisions. Let's look at an example. Using a non-qualified annuity tax-free for long-term care expenses, let's say you have a $100,000 non-qualified annuity with a $60,000 cost basis that's not taxable, and a $40,000 in deferred gains, which is taxable unless used for long-term care expenses. You could complete a 1035 exchange so the $40,000 of gains transfer tax-free to the new LTC policy. Not only are you able to transfer those gains tax-free, but those gains can be withdrawn later tax-free for long-term care expenses, whether you're receiving care at home or in a facility. LTC hybrid annuities will also provide leverage on your deposit so that if you put in $100,000, you can get additional coverage beyond your deposit of $200,000 or $300,000 for LTC. If you don't use the policy for LTC, your name beneficiaries will inherit the taxable gains as they would have in the first place. The second type of a policy is life insurance with long-term care benefits. These can provide LTC protection, a death benefit, or both. Any amount of the death benefit not used for LTC will be passed to your beneficiaries. These policies have two buckets of money as well. Number one, a base policy, which is the death benefit, and number two, an extension or continuation of long-term care benefits. If you need long-term care, that base policy's death benefit is used first to pay for care, and then after that death benefit is fully used, the second bucket of money is used to pay for care for a specified time. Under the PPA, a qualifying life and LTC policy allows you to use the death benefit as needed to pay for qualifying LTC expenses. Premiums are guaranteed and often benefits can increase over time. These policies typically provide an LTC benefit pool two to three times the base premium amount, but lifetime unlimited benefits are also available. Both life insurance and annuity hybrid solutions offer comprehensive coverage like traditional LTC insurance policies by paying for home care, assisted living, or skilled nursing facility care up to a contractually stated monthly LTC maximum. Plan design and policy limits vary by insurance carrier. 
The new LTC policy must be considered tax qualified under the Internal Revenue Code, Section 7702B, which most are, and the existing annuity must be considered non-qualified, which means it was funded with after-tax dollars. You can't fund a policy with pre-tax dollars like from an IRA or 401k because it's considered qualified money. To receive the preferential tax treatment, the funds must be directly sent from the existing life insurance or annuity policy to the new LTC insurance company. The new LTC insurance company must be able to accept the funds via a 1035 exchange, and not all companies can, so make sure that it can. Can the policy owner be changed when doing a 1035 exchange? The new policy owner must be the same as the existing owner. It's considered like to like. If one spouse, let's say the wife, owns an annuity or life insurance policy and they want coverage for both spouses, the wife could be the owner on the new policy and both spouses would be joint insureds, enabling both spouses to get long-term care protection. Are partial exchanges allowed? Partial exchanges may be allowed with the gain, but the procedures may vary depending on the insurance company. What about underwriting? Medical underwriting is more lenient with hybrid annuities than life hybrids and traditional long-term care insurance, but there are still health qualifications that must be met with these products. How will LTC benefits be reported? LTC benefits and premiums paid for qualified long-term care insurance from annuity values will be reported on Form 1099 LTC, but you don't have to pay tax on them. The right fit. Who may want to consider an annuity or life policy with LTC benefits? If you have an existing life insurance policy that has significant cash value and you don't need the death benefit, or if you have a non-qualified annuity that has significant gains and you don't need it for income, you can use that to fund a policy for long-term care protection. You can do a 1035 exchange and receive tax-free benefits for long-term care with both solutions. The hybrid annuity policies are often a good fit when your health is not great and you won't qualify for a traditional long-term care insurance policy. There are companies offering hybrid annuity solutions as described before up to age 85. It would be wise to consider a long-term care hybrid annuity when you can take tax-free withdrawals for long-term care instead of taking taxable withdrawals from a non-qualified annuity to pay for long-term care expenses. The bottom line, the PPA encourages the purchase of long-term care insurance within the private sector. The government would prefer people and insurance companies pay long-term care costs rather than people spend down their assets and then apply for Medicaid assistance. This can be a great strategy for those who have an existing annuity set aside to pay for long-term care expenses and for those who are planning to self-fund their care costs. It's a good idea to work with an independent long-term care insurance specialist when putting an LTC plan in place. I'm Kelly Augsperger, certified long-term care insurance specialist with Steadfast Insurance. If you have any questions or want to learn more, connect with me online or give me a call and I'm happy to help.